Our next presenter is Shondell Bidal. She's the Nurture Thy Nature pi uh, Pioneering in Your Self-Healing. I'll read her, her bio right now. She's the founder of Love, Rebirth, and Nurture Thy Nature, Pioneering in Your Self-Healing. She's known as the midwife of the soul. She's a shaman, medicine woman, spiritual life transformational coach, a psychic, Reiki practitioner, placenta specialist, Alva method practitioner, Bach flower practitioner, homeopathy, angel card reader, author, and public speaker. She comes from a long lineage of healers using herbs and flowers. She specializes in facilitating women of narcissism and domestic violence, uh, victims, women victims of narcissism and domestic violence, and supporting women during preparation for pregnancy and during postpartum transformation as a placenta specialist. Her mission is to stop generational trauma through inner healing work, a very important mission, and help women heal and remove the gunk before giving birth to strengthen the connection to their bodies with inner wisdom. Her website is, she has a couple of websites, nurturebynature.com and loverebirth.com. Please welcome Shondell Vidal. Thank you. Thank you so much for the wonderful introduction. Thank you for the Healers Network for having me here and for all of you who have come and participated with us. And I'm just really excited to be able to, to basically live my soul's mission, which is to share what I've come across that has been helpful as regards in regards to pioneering in your self healing. And I wanted this to be a little bit of an introduction to pioneering in your self healing. So for anybody out there that has anxiety, who is highly critical, very judgmental, then this is something that you might wanna pay attention to. I'm going to share some, some tools and, and some just school of thoughts for, for a reminder of, you know, just keeping things simple and being able to work through what we're working through. And I do want this to be interactive. So by all means, if anyone wants to raise their hand to interject on anything or have a conversation, I think please do. Um, this is all about you guys. It's all about community, which is actually the first thing that I want to talk about when it comes to pioneering and your self-healing. Okay, I'm so thankful. Shut down for before we get started, can you shut a door so we don't hear the children in the background? Awesome. I'll go ahead and I'll move. Unfortunately, they're already behind closed doors. <laughs> I do have children. Um, okay, so hopefully this is a little bit better. So I just wanted to share the first, one of the first pillars when it comes to pioneering and your self-healing, which is community. There is nothing that we, that we can do necessarily without somebody a community or, or, or someone to be able to hold our hands sometimes I feel like when we have come from a traumatic event and we're looking to pick ourselves up and we need more self-esteem more confidence we're unclear and unable to really see things for ourselves that it's very helpful to have somebody by our side that can hold space for us without judgment and I know sometimes that can be hard to right a lot of us think well how can how can we find people who can we can feel safe with um, and you'll find your people like the Healers Network. The Healers Network is a perfect place for us to be able to communicate, connect, learn from one another, share stories, tools. We all have, um, you know, something that we've come from that has supported us to be where we are now and to share with you all our experience. And it's not one size fits all. You know, uh, everyone gets to figure out how to honor their own nature, which is why my company is called nurture thy nature. I feel that by being in a place of, of figuring out what really is valuing ourselves, what is honoring us, what protocol, what, what strategy would best suit us to optimize this body that we're in, which is technology. It has the wisdom, the intelligence of God itself. And, um, you know, if you're ever doubting that, I mean, just look at pregnancy, look at the miracle of how conception happens. It's mind-blowing really and so community is so essential when you're embarking on pioneering because you want to be able to connect to people who are looking to do the same they want to have they're looking for the same outcome peace harmony um, empowering themselves they're not they're tired of what I feel personally is more of the mainstream which is a lot of pressure high expectations um, you know, a lot of what I came through was I, I, a lot of what I had to come up against was, 
um, you know, I basically was told that if you weren't happy 24 seven, that you're, you're a toxic person. And for somebody who has post-traumatic stress disorder, for someone who's dealing with a domestic violence or maybe childhood trauma that is now coming up again, maybe in your twenties and thirties, you can't always, you know, you're always, you're not always going to be a hundred percent. You're going to have blind spots and you need good people around you. So the Healers Network is a great place or finding people in groups where you're, you're, you're maybe looking for more support and like-minded individuals, you might find those people. Um, you always wanna be aware of what the characteristics are, but good community is always gonna support you through. Sometimes a person standing next to you, not giving you any particular advice, but just being with you while you're crying, while you're, thinking or maybe just to hear you say what you need to say out loud because you need to hear it yourself is very healing so I like to support people in facilitating um, you are your best healer you are your best friend people always say well you're your worst enemy or you're you know whatever negative stuff right I'm more about switching it around the same is true about the opposite as much as I can be my my worst enemy is as much as I can be my best friend and I choose to be my best friend. I decide to be good to myself and to learn to honor myself. And sometimes that means looking at what other successful people, other healers in the community are doing, et cetera. So um, that's one pillar is community. The other pillar I would say is never giving up, resilience. Um, some people would say they have it. Some people say they don't. And um, I say that you know, sometimes we're in a dark place and we can't seem to fathom, like, when is it going to be over? When are we going to get to the point in our lives where we're already at our, at our, our like the end game, the result that we want, which is peace and harmony and being in a place where we're reaping the rewards, whether it be financially, whether it be in our relationships and things of that nature. And the truth is that we're never going to not have challenges we're always going to come up against something there's always going to be a challenge and you're never going to be in a place where it's just you know one way and that's the fun part about living here it's living on earth amongst all these different cultures people there's a reason for that there's opportunity that can be found in all the difference that we have here on earth and it's more about your ability to be able to utilize the way you see things perspective you know seeing the opportunity in meeting that toxic person and recognizing you know what this isn't the kind of relationship I want the kind of relationship I'm seeking that would honor me is this kind of relationship there's always going to be opportunities in what we feel is a daunting situation or an unexpected scenario that was really challenging we didn't want there's going to be an opportunity and the more we train ourselves to remember that there's opportunities in these places and these low places that we're in. And that's how we get to the next level, the more we can create the resilience. And sometimes we have to go back to community to create that resilience too, where we ourselves don't have the faith and the hope anymore to continue because we're so depleted of energy. We're so saddened by our heartache and breaks and whatever we've gone through. Right. Because we're for the most part, we're always thinking about the future and the past. So if we're always thinking about the future and the past, we create a lot of that anxiety on our own. We constantly are triggering that fight or flight response and lowering our immunity, compromising it, because that's how connected everything is when it comes to our body. So community resilience are two really powerful pillars that you want to have as a part of the foundation so that you can pioneer uh, on your journey to wellness and longevity healing. And another one I would say is um, a moment of silence, self-discovery. Self-discovery can look many different ways. A lot of us have said that, you know, yes, we have certain practices that we have in place for us to take time to connect with ourselves, but how consistent are we? How much of what we are a part of, like our everyday jobs, our responsibility as a mother, our responsibility as a provider, husband, wife, whatever you are, sibling, how much of that takes away from us because we're always looking to fill that need or that expectation. So we need to really remember that honoring our time for self-reflection 
away from the masses, away from the realm of technology where we have access on Google to almost Googling everything. Like let's Google, let's use our own internal Google. Let's go into a place where we can feel safe, um, you know, and where we can put our guard down, which is hard for a lot of people who suffer from trauma, which is hard for a lot of people who have anxiety. It's hard for someone who has anxiety to sit alone by themselves and do breath work. It's not easy. And you know what? It takes a lot of guts. I, I know because I went through it. I still go through it. I still have that there. But the, the but the difference now with where I was a couple years ago handling anxiety versus where I am now is I use it as a teacher. You know, I use it as my my basically my reminder for what I'm trying to make second nature, which is harmony, which is empowering myself and utilizing my um my my silent my time for silence and connecting with myself and breathing and checking in with my alignment checking in with where i'm not honoring myself which is all important that's what the body does the body is there to let you know hey you know you need to slow down you might want to do xyz but you're kind of falling short on even just breathing properly if you're not even able to just take in a nice deep breath of air how can you say, I'm going to go for this promotion? I'm going to go for this class and I'm going to ace an A on it. You know, you're not hydrating yourself. You're not eating right. You're not, you know what I'm saying? And a lot, the thing is that for most of us, we sometimes are on autopilot and, you know, all we've been taught to do is to do what we're used to, you know, work, go to work, provide, be there for those people that we love, try to do the best that we can but we fall short on us. So self-reflection time allows us to really check in with ourselves. And it's really simple. You know, we don't have to be, we're holding complete where we're at. It's all the answers lie within you. And every time we go outside of ourselves, we look towards another individual to give us that guidance. We're really just disempowering ourselves. We're taking away the opportunity for us to really just go within and give ourselves the confidence and the belief and the trust to say, you know what, that's that's it. That's what I need. It's not what my mom said. It's not what my husband told me. It's not what, you know, my coworker had mentioned. It's this. It's this thing that I need. So coming back to us, heightening our intuition through self-reflection, through, um, you know, tuning into our bodies, checking in to see what your level of pain is during self-reflection time. All of those Things can be done during self-reflection and will help you or aid you with connecting deeper to your body, especially for a woman who has been through domestic violence, molestations, abuse, childhood trauma. Uh, women have a hard time with connecting to their body. They're, they're like looming around it. They're not inside of it. And then what happens is it creates a lot of discord. There's no really getting the inner guidance or wisdom that lies within you. And you're constantly seeking outside of yourself. And now there's just this empty uh, place within you. You know, you don't have, you, you want to always go towards the habits and the lifestyle approaches that are going to strengthen you. And that's why I say community, which is the first pillar is so important because you are the sum of the people you're constantly with. So if you're with people who don't even recognize for themselves that they're behaving in a way that's not going to support them to get to that next level, or, you know, there, there's always a way to figure out like, you know, this isn't right. At some point, you're going to recognize for yourself, something's off. I'm not getting the results I want. Something's going on. So what is it? And the only way to really get the answer is not going and, and digging your head into a book or going to go ask a therapist all the time. Sometimes it's just take a moment for, your for yourself to shut off everything, which is that self-reflection time, and just breathe. Stop even thinking if you can. And that's hard too for someone who has trauma. How do you get into a space of stopping the white noise? All of that chatter in your mind that tells you you're wasting your time sitting here breathing. Go and go cook. Your kids are hungry. Go, go work. You need to do something that's monetizing. It's going to bring you money. You know, but the thing is that we need to sometimes do that counterintuitive stuff, because if you match up the amount of hours you spend sitting, commuting to get to work, to make money, to put food on the table or to do anything, you know, that we've been doing mainly, a lot of us, I would say, is mostly into that system, that system of constantly producing. So we want to also make 
our creativity, anything that allows us to connect to that childlike wonder that allows us to step aside from all of that and just connect with us, with our soul, with our intuition, and really just see what comes up for us. It's not always about thinking it out. It's not always about analyzing things and and figuring it out that way. Sometimes it's just being in silence for a moment and taking a deep breath and working through that. And sometimes it's um, taking a break for a glass of water and praying over your water for a moment. I know that might sound silly, but at the end of the day, we need to bring some magic back into our, our interactions and create more transition for ourselves. We need to be our own best friends. We need to be our own advocates. You need to care enough for yourself. And if you're not caring enough for yourself, you're I'm sorry to say this, it doesn't matter how what you're going for in life, eventually things will fall apart. You're you have to be well rounded in a way, you know? And um you don't have to think so hard about this. You know, like I think Robert Wood had said this, you know, the soul will do what it needs to do. Well, how do you connect with the soul? How do you get to that point? A lot of that learning to trust yourself, learning to trust your intuition, getting connected to that winner wisdom in your body and allowing now then for your body to start taking its place so that it can start healing or, or working towards you getting healed up, not just like mentally and spiritually, but physically too, your body will change. It reflects is that time for you to just really reflect and connect with yourself, be surround yourself around good people when you're at your lowest be very selective with the people you're going to have around you. Um, you know, your soul, you, you will connect to your soul and you will build that relationship, that relationship through you taking these little steps, which right now sounds like a lot of stuff. Yes, darling. I see someone raised their hand. You can go ahead. Starling, Starling. Maybe it might've been a mis. Uh, Boo boo. But Starling raised her hand. And if you're not ready to open up for questions, and then you can open it up afterwards and take them to your room. And when you're done, I want you to feel complete, not be interrupted, and, and okay. close it out. All right. So we, ran o we went over three very specific pillars for pioneering in your self-healing as an introduction to this. And um, the first one was community. The second one was, the second one was um, resilience, rem remembering never to give up. Um, and then the other one was to self-reflect, to create a time for you to have reflecting, reflection time. And reflection can look many ways. And like I said, one size does not fit all. Within these pillars, you can customize what works best for you, how you want to seek community, how you want to, um, you know, reflect, whether it's through you sitting in your bed in the morning time, you just woke up. And instead of like just putting your feet on the floor and running, maybe you do something different. Maybe you sit back in your bed a little bit longer and maybe you just breathe. And you just feel into your body for a minute. You know, you have to kind of start disrupting the typical behaviors. We've been doing something for so many years on autopilot that eventually it just, you have to break away from it little by little and be patient with yourself. Very patient with yourself. And I'm just going to go over those three pillars um, because I believe I only have maybe like about four more minutes. Is that true, Sherry? So, yes, this is okay. Alex. Yes, that's fine. Yeah, we need to uh, have some time for the wrap up. Go ahead. We can we can go. I'm going to wrap it up right now. OK, so what I wanted to say was basically that, you know, the introduction to pioneering yourself healing, you can customize within these pillars. You, it can look many different ways for you. But the fun part about figuring out how to customize it is taking that silent time for yourself and listening to your body and see what it wants you to do. Sometimes for me, that's being on the yoga mat and that's doing some movement and some stretching and some meditating. And other days it looks like hula hooping to music. 
It doesn't have to be the same rigorous routine every time. You can make it fun. The whole point is to really ignite your childlike wonder. So if anyone has kids here and they watch their kids, how they are in the mornings, they wake up and they go straight to playing and they're joyful. They don't, you know, they're happy every morning. And I, I think that that's something that we all get to harness and we all get to remember. And sometimes that gets activated by doing simple things like hula hooping, listening to music, taking time for self-reflection and just listening to our bodies, our heartbeat, our breath, things of that nature. So you guys can come visit me in room 33. I do appreciate all of you being patient with me. This is my first time publicly speaking here at the Healers Network and it's, it's definitely nerve, <laughs> nerve wracking. So thank you for your feedback if you have any and I love and care for all of you very much and I hope to continue to provide more and I will be doing free Bach flower essence consultations in my room, um, angel readings and uh, seven minute problem solving where I spiritually do some spiritual guidance for all of you. Jondel, thank you for an awesome presentation. That was totally wonderful. And I can't believe it's your first time. You must have done this a thousand times before. Maybe not in this lifetime, but in a previous lifetime. Mm-hmm. So your prize, your prize that you're giving away is a, uh, let's see what it's called. It's, oh, your four consecutive Reiki sessions or a free consult with Block Flower Essence. And this, you have to pay shipping on that $7. But the value of what you're offering is $497, according to the sheet that I see. So select a number between 1 and 100. And folks who are listening, please start putting your numbers in. And again, people who are a part of the staff are not eligible. Let, let, <laughs> me, participating. Let, I would like to share a little feedback of my experience with her. Okay. I, I don't know what happened in my life, but there was a time in my life where I couldn't even walk down the stairs and my body kind of shut down. I was like almost like very acidic and I, I had to grab the walls as I climbed down my stairs in my apartment. And I found out later that I have arthritis in my knees. Um, but in the meantime, I reached out to Shondell as well as other healers to help me walk. I felt very limited and very restricted. And she did one session on me and I did other sessions in that my life that week, but um, in a week, my whole life changed. And I don't know where to put the benefit or the uh, praise to, but I know she was part of my healing journey that in that one week of me not being able to move, I was able to move again and walk. And I know uh, I'm uh, a healer and I always seek healing and I have many healing modalities, but she was one of the people that helped me move forward in my life. So uh, I don't know if I want to give her 100% credit, but I want to give her credit because um, something different happened in my life uh, after my session with her. So um, I'd like to give her some appraise and some uh, recognition for that. Okay. Wonderful. Okay. Shondell, what is your number? Unmute yourself. Go ahead. What's your number? Do we have all the numbers in the chat? Put down your numbers in the chat before we reach it out. Last chance after you heard my testimonial, guys, if you don't want an opportunity with this lady, go for it. Hurry up. And again, participants are not eligible. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You guys got to work it out privately if you're, you are one of the practitioners. Participants are eligible. Practitioners are not. That's what I meant. Practitioners are not right. eligible. Right. You guys got to work it out. So put down in the chat a number. Did you write it down, Shondell? Do you have a number written out? Are you ready to sh- shout it out? So, uh, Shondell, we just need you to give us your number. We have a bunch of numbers in the chat. If you guys want a session with her, it's valued at $497 uh, and includes bulk fill-all remedies. All you have to do is pay for the shipping. Okay. Fee. She put number three. So now what we're going to do is scroll through the list and see if Anybody had three or who was closest to three? Let's take a look. Uh, Eileen, uh, I'm sorry, Eileen, you can't apply because you're one of the practitioners. Um, uh, Rachel. I see, I see 14. 14 is Sterling. Starling. No, uh, Karen. Karen. We have a Karen. Zazo is a 14.
Karen said 14. I don't see anyone else close. So Karen, you win. <coughs> and what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to follow Shondell to room number 12. I'm sorry, not room 12, room 33. And uh, she'll make arrangements for your uh, free session. Congratulations.